one. I do have a quick story I'm gonna to get to in just a second, but I'm bringing you this. What up guys, welcome to another episode of Happy Face Hold'em. We are down here at Commerce Casino today and we jumped into a three, five, $200 max game while we were waiting for the five, five. Uh, I think we played all of 15 minutes and ran it up 42 bucks. Anyways, that was cool. So we jump into the 5-5 five five and the first hand we get dealt before we even have the camera out, pocket aces. Under the gun, we raise it to $20. The cutoff is the only caller and the flop is king, king, seven. Um, continued for 20 bucks and he called. The turn is another ace. So we boat up on the turn and we check. And he leads out for 45 with about 210 behind. Uh, so I call. The river comes out, a six of hearts, inconsequential card, right? We got the, we have the nuts. Uh, so we lead into him for 115, targeting a little more than half his stack, but giving him an option to keep a little bit back behind and figuring he'd do what he did next. And that is jam for 210 total. We of course snap it off and take it down. So good run so far. Coming up, we make a tremendous bluff on a turn to take down a huge pot and hopefully some other big hands. We're just getting going here. So without waiting anymore, let's just get right into it. What do you say? While waiting for our 5-5 seat to be open, we jump into the wackiest of blind structure games available in LA. It's a 3-5 200 cap. We open ace-queen offsuit, 15, and we get zero action preflop and make a few bucks. Then on the button, after six players limped ahead of us, we see another premium of a king-queen suited. These games typically play pretty face up, so it's time to punish the limpers and put in a button raise to 55. And that's enough to take this one down and profit 42 bucks in six minutes, right after my name being called for the 5-5. So let's jump on to that game. I already mentioned the first hand in this game during the intro where I turned the nut full house and we got the money in. So the session has started off great. And again, our pocket aces have gone uncracked. After the action folds to me in the hijack, I see two suited Broadway cards and open to 15, still getting a feel for this game. The button makes the call, and he so far seems to be pretty splashy and loose. So we go heads up to a flop with $40 in the middle up for grabs. The flop comes out 595 five with two diamonds. Flopping only two overs and a backdoor straight draw on a paired board with a flush draw and no clubs to match mine, I check, and the button pretty quickly puts out $25. I don't think he has any fives in his range, but a nine and diamonds are both likely. So I consider his bet, and although maybe it's a negative EV move, I make the call, thinking if I improve on the turn, I can stick it out or take this one down. So now $90 in the pot, the dealer puts out the deuce of hearts. This is probably the worst card for my specific hand, not picking up any additional equity. Kind of like Scooby-Doo, this card foils my plans and I check. The button fairly quickly, again, bets $50. So I'm really leaning towards a diamond draw, but having literally no additional equity on this turn card, I just don't think I can donate any more Charlie chips. And I decide to let this one go. It's an easy fold. In this one, the cutoff raised the $30, which I've seen a few times now from this player in this position with this specific sizing, and no one is three betting him. So I three bet him to 90 out of position from the small blind after looking down at ace queen offsuit, and he pretty quickly made the call. A young Asian kid that looks pretty confident in his game, being aggressive when he plays, but not playing a whole lot of hands. His buddy is sitting to my right. He's a stone cold rock at the table. So we'll be heads up to a flop with 185 in the pot and totally brick the three, four, 10, two club flop. I consider what my pre-flop three betting range may look like from the big blind and how I may play aces, kings, queens, or ace, king in this spot. Also holding the ace of clubs, I doubt he'll have a flush draw in this spot unless he specifically has like king, queen of clubs. So targeting middling pocket pairs like eights or nines or two overs that I think will peel one street, I lead out for $65. I think if I had aces or kings here, I'd do the same. He tanks for about 30 seconds, which is a good sign. And I think my read on the situation is right so far. And he seems to reluctantly make the call. So now we've got a nice size pot of $315 happening and we see the five of spades on the turn. So ace queen may be the best hand, but based on my read of the situation, I'm putting his range more like middling pocket pairs, like I said, ace king, ace queen, or king queen. So I wanna to continue to put pressure on those hands and I opt for two thirds pot sizing of $200 as my heart starts pounding. And it only takes six seconds for him to fold and give me the nice hand pat on the table. You don't see me make these moves like this on the vlog much, but I think this board lent itself well to a bluff holding the ace of clubs. Tell me your thoughts in the comments on this one. In the next one, plus one open to 15, plus two myself, the cutoff button and small blind all make the call going six ways for $90 to a flop of two, nine, seven with two hearts. 
This is probably a fold preflop, but whatever, and the action quickly checks all the way around. We pick up a flush draw on the four hearts on the turn, and the initial preflop razor leads out for a stone cold minimum of $5. We all get a little laugh out of it, and we all call one by one. So with $115 in the middle, the dealer collects the chips and lays out the ace of hearts on the river, giving us the third nut flush. Plus one doesn't like it and turns the ace face down. Seeing the player to my left try to check out a turn, I look down to see if I have the queen or the jack of hearts. Disappointed it wasn't the queen, but seeing as a few other players have already given up, I go super small with a $15 wager, playing off the turn bet that happened. If I'm raised, it's a pretty easy fold. I get one caller from the button and roll over the winner to take down 100 bucks. Not all that exciting of a hand, but wanted to show how even at a 5-5 game, it can pay, play pretty passively. In the next hand, I open to $20 from the low jack with ace queen offsuit and get called by the hijack cutoff in small blind. We have a pot of $85 going four ways to a flop. The flop isn't great in jack 610 with two clubs. Although we spiked a gutter to Broadway, I think this smashes the caller's range hitting top pair, two pair, or open ended draws and flush draws, since I unblock clubs. So for those reasons I check, and the action checks through to see a queen of clubs on the turn. Well, the front door flush just got there, along with 8-9 for a straight, and unlikely anyone played ace-king because there was no 3-bet preflop. With too many hands, I'm still behind, I check, and the action again checks through. So, not too sure what to make of all this now, but still scary with three other players in the hand. The river makes things even worse. This board got uglier and uglier. The 9 of spades puts a 4-liner to the straight out there on top of everything else. We check, and the cutoff decides to lead for $25, and the small blind pretty quickly makes the call. I think if I had the ace of clubs, this may be a good spot to raise, but with two players interested in this pot, it's a pretty easy fold with top pair. These two players show pocket eights and ace eight, both making the dummy end of the straight on the river. A strong bet on the flop or turn could have moved this pot our direction. Live and learn. Moving right along, we open to $20 from plus two when we're dealt two suited Broadway cards. As normal, we get three callers from the cutoff, button, and big blind, and we'll see a four-way flop with $80 in the middle. We smash this one with 10 deuce king, two spades spiking top two. Leading into three other players is pretty strong, but this board is draw heavy, and I'd like to narrow the field. So I make a bet of $50. Our splashy friend from the cutoff wants to gamble and makes the call while all the other players fold out one by one. So we've grown this pot to $180, and we see a deuce of diamonds on the turn. A pretty safe card, all in all, but the cutoff says, I take all the way. This usually indicates a speculative hand, but thinking that it'll keep him splashy for later pots, I check and he checks back. The river brings in a backdoor flush, which I doubt helps him, but also maybe let him get there with queen nine, so I check and he checks back. We're good to scoop this one and hopefully our kindness will pay dividends later. From plus one, we get a premium ace king and we open to $20. Dividends are not paid on this one, unfortunately, as our splashy friend folds, but the older Asian gentleman that's been cracking jokes all night and chipping up asks if we want action from the big blind. I say sure, and I offer to check it all the way down. He declines and says, just play. So with 40 in the middle, heads up, he checks dark, and the flop comes king high with two deuces, but two hearts. I don't want to give this one away, so I continue for 20 bucks, and he says he has to be sure he actually has king deuce. On every paired board he's not involved in all night, he's claimed to have folded trips. Every single one. So with that, he mucks, and we show as we say thank you for the action. From plus two, we look at 9-8 suitor, the heart variety, and we open to $15. I think I'm kind of forking my range here as my earlier opens were 15, but then I moved to $20, and now I'm back to 15. From middle position, I should surely be sticking to 20, or even going 25 prepared to play out of position. Our splashy player friend in the hijack calls, the small blind calls, and the big blind closes the action by defending. Another four-way pot with $60 in the middle. We see a board come out of Jack 3-9, all monotone. As mentioned earlier, betting into three players is pretty strong. With middle pair but no clubs, I think we have to see bet this Jack high board. Although middling cards and flush flops favor the blinds and other callers, I have to take a shot for $20, one third pot. The small blind is the player we bluffed when we had ace queen against, and he decides to check raise the $50. I think being almost a min click and this flop favoring blinds, the decision's easy on this one. I show the pair of nines hoping to induce some information back from him, 
but he mocks as the chips are pushed his way. In this one, from under the gun, we look down at King Queen offsuit and make a light open to 20. The action folds around to the blinds, and both the small and big blind decide to add the extra $15 each, so we'll see a flop three ways with $60 in the middle, and gratefully, we'll play this one in position. The small blind, our older Asian jokester, checks dark, and we see a flop of 4-8 jack with two clubs. The big blind plays in flow checking to me, and I decide on a c-bet of half pot. I think in this particular spot, if I'm opting to continue, it needs to be much larger to price out draws, although again this board doesn't super connect with my under the gun opening range. The small blind folds out, and the big blind decides the price is right, so we'll see a turn heads up with $120 growing in this pot. The turn brings the six of clubs, six seems to be our number of the day, and completes the obvious flush draw. So when he checks to me, I see no need to continue, and I check back, still only holding two overs, and we see a free river card. It's pretty much a blank although, it does complete a couple straight draws. The big blind takes a little time to ponder his move, and elects to bet out for $70. The sizing has me a little confused. It's not really a value size, nor does it seem bluffy like. I think a missed club draw over bets the river and a made flush value bets like 35 or 50 to get a crying call from maybe a jack. So with two thirds pot, what is he hoping to get called by? Either he thinks he's protecting the made straight against a missed flush or checked his made flush on a turn hoping I'd stab again and trying to make up for some lost value. Not making any sense of it and having total air anyways, this is just an easy fold and I lay it down. Just thought I'd take a second and talk through that one. What are your thoughts down in the comments? Aside from it being an easy fold for us, what do you really think he's repping with the two thirds pot size river bet? Comment on this one and I'm gonna give away a sticker to somebody who answers that. We're really having a great time with this game. There's some really good characters at the table and I look down at Jack eight suited from the cutoff and I opened $15. Again, I think I'm forking my range by not going my standard $20. But seeing as I'll be playing in position after the button folds, I guess I don't hate the opening size, results oriented anyways. Only the big blind decides to defend on this one, and we're going to go heads up to a flop with $30 in the pot. We totally miss the 4 ace 9 2 club 1 diamond flop, having only a couple backdoor draws, I suppose I can rep an ace, as I should have all the aces here, but then again opening small from the cutoff doesn't put a lot of aces in my range but I opt to see bet for half pot after he checks to me and he quickly makes the call. So $60 in the pot, we see the queen of hearts on the turn. We add a little equity getting closer to our backdoor straight, but see an easy decision to check after he checks again to us. Maybe this is a spot we should be barreling again. I'm not real sure what to do here. So off to the river, we get the six of hearts, not changing anything. He checks again to me, and now I think it's time to take another stab. Although I'm not a big fan of my sizing in this spot, I guess it looks like value when I bet $25. And our read on the situation is pretty spot on looking at the result when he folds and we scoop a small one. It's time to rack up and book the win. But the night didn't end there. Stick around to hear what happened next. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Hope you enjoyed that one. I do have a quick story I'm gonna get to in just a second, but I'm bringing you this outro from the Players Club in Ventura, California, which used to be my home room. Sadly, as you may be able to tell, or if you follow me on Instagram, you know, they closed during COVID, but rumor has it they're gonna be reopening across the freeway here in the near future. So I'm really looking forward to that. This has been by far my most profitable room in my poker career. To this day, it remains the same. So anyways, we played this game for uh, two hours and 11 minutes, I think it was. I'll put all the numbers right here. Had a nice little profit on the session down at Commerce Casino. But it didn't end with this session. So as you know, we started at the 3-5-200 cap, which is the wackiest structure game I've ever seen. And we played for all of six minutes to profit $42. We then get this nice little profit from the 5-5 game. But as we're walking out, after we left the cage, I heard this guy talking at a one, I think it's a one-two table, maybe it's one-three there but it's, uh, I think, an $80 cap game. Um, so I heard him talking smack to some other players on the table, and he just happened to have three racks of blue chips on the table. So uh, there was an open seat, two seats to his left. I sat down and I said to him, you know, chips flow to the left. That's all I said. So anyways, we played that game for about an hour. Here's the stats, and we profited $169 in that session. So I just thought it was comical, a little story I wanted to share. I did post it on my Instagram and I do post things like this on my Instagram. So if you ever wanna know where I'm playing or what's going on with me, you know, right at the moment, just follow me on Instagram. It's right here, but I think you already knew that. 
Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this one. I'm uh, glad to be bringing you content back from Los Angeles, not playing as much poker as we would like. So we're getting in the poker we can get in for now. But anyways, guys, I will be bringing you more content. And until next time, don't forget, wash your hands.